Hello, and welcome to today's session. As always, I'm your host, Kevin Grote, Senior Engineer and Technical Partner Manager here at VMware. And today, we're gonna to be talking all about software-defined networking, particularly NSX, and specifically around micro-segmentation. NSX marks a tremendous leap forward in the way that we, as an engineering community, are approaching software-defined networking. And today, we're going to be checking in more on micro-segmentation, as well as a demonstration video from VMware's own Brad Hedlund to show us more. So let's first start off with a key understanding of the differentiation and what NSX is bringing to the table. Inside of networking, we know we have seven layers of communication ranging all the way from the physical up to the application. And previously, Inside of things like vCloud networking and security and uh, you know, all of the, the, the vShield edge components and things that we were doing before and quite frankly, what's happened inside of the virtual stack for a number of years has really worked inside of layers four through seven. So basically the ways that machines are communicating with each other, protecting the uh, data, the transport, between machines. Now, NSX marks a significant difference. So if we considered that what's over there on the left-hand side is what vCloud networking and security used to be able to do, what does NSX bring to the table? Well, NSX brings in those next two layers, layers two and three, where we have the actual data and the network transport, your logical switching, routing, all of that's happening inside of there. So that really all that's left is nothing more than the physical layer. So what does this allow us to do? Well, I mentioned today that one of the things that I wanted to talk about was micro-segmentation. And micro-segmentation means that when we're looking at that traffic, that east-west traffic inside of the data center, not necessarily the north and south that's coming in and out, but what happens when data is already inside? Now what do we do with it? This is where NSX and the ideas of distributed firewalling come into play to give us more functionality than we ever had before. To be able to protect information and our workloads as data is being transported from one workload to another within the data center. I mean, if you think about it, the ideas and possibilities are really endless. From inside of a data center to outside of a data center to across multiple data centers, as we start looking at all this functionality and tying it into what we're doing with the stretched data center ideas inside of vSphere, then we really start to get a picture of what we can do with NSX. But it's not just inside of standard server workloads where micro-segmentation is important. VDI is another one. You know, if we think about it, we give people virtual desktops. They take those virtual desktops and they have to go work. And quite often they'll also use their, their work virtual desktop for maybe some personal stuff. Or maybe they download a file for work that isn't protected or otherwise gets contaminated through you know, a, a USB or other peripheral device. Anything can happen and a lot of us have seen it all. So when we're looking at VDI, that presents another unique opportunity to talk about protection through micro-segmentation and being able to protect the information that's coming in on those virtual machines as it moves around inside of the data center. Additionally, NSX is being integrated into vCloud Air. So now it's not just inside of the data center, not just across data centers, but we have all new capabilities and things that we can do with NSX. We know that NSX allows us to be able to create an entire network and even clone, snapshot the network. Now imagine being able to do that, not only on-premise, but off-premise inside of vCloud Air. The possibilities really start expanding from here. NSX gives us the ability to create multi-site extensions. We know this, we've seen this, but now if we take a look at what NSX is going to be doing, it's going to be moving that same methodology to allow us to create 
extended networks out into hybrid cloud. Really giving our customers true flexibility inside of space. And it's doing this all using the same logical, logical routing, distributed firewalling, all of the technology that it's had in place inside of the data center. But if we're looking at what else it can do, you know, one of the issues with disaster recovery has always been, you know, what do I do with the IPs? What do I do with the networking when it gets over to the other side? Well, NSX has an answer for that. And using site extension through NSX, if there is a disaster, you're able to now not have to worry about modifying those workloads and changing all of the network addressing. NSX is going to be able to take care of that because again, the network is extended. The same way we're moving the workloads, we can move the network. With all of this comes the great responsibility of monitoring it, managing it. And especially when you're talking about the types of scale that NSX can reach. NSX can reach tremendous amounts of scale with minimal amount of infrastructure, all by taking the software defined approach. So inside of the management space, we have integrations for NSX with vRealize operations. So now not only can operations give us insight and predictive analysis into our compute storage on premise and off premise with things like vCloud Air, but also insight and predictive analysis into what's happening inside of our network. So we can spend less time finding problems, more time solving them, and more time building predictable additions and modifications and administration inside of our virtual infrastructure. So with that, we're going to take a look now at a little bit more about micro segmentation and also be seeing a video from our own Brad Hedlund who's going to be showing us more about what micro segmentation looks like. So with that, let's get started. Hi again, it's Raj. Since Adam and I started taking a software-defined data center approach, we've gotten a lot of attention around here. Virtualizing the network has completely changed the way we operate. The executive staff is impressed, and the word's getting out. Yesterday, the guy who runs our security team, Jesse, had lunch with Adam, and they tossed around a few ideas. He had a few questions of his own and popped by my office. He said that even though we have a strong data center perimeter defense, it's not infallible. He still has nightmares about threats that do make it through. Those threats sneak through the perimeter defense riding on legitimate user access. And once inside, there are few controls to keep them from moving laterally from server to server. Basically, he doesn't want to be the guy that has to explain the how and why to the shareholders when we get compromised. Jesse has always imagined applying micro-segmentation inside the perimeter, but has never seen a way to realistically operationalize, keeping up with all the firewall changes, with VMs being created, moved, and deleted all the time. He wanted to know if our software-defined data center could make a zero-trust security approach possible. So I told him to take a seat. Check this out. It's not like how you traditionally manage firewalls. This is different. It's very automated and baked into the software-defined data center. Here, for example, we can provision a web tier workload or a database tier workload with PCI data, and the appropriate controls are enforced. If the VM moves, its policies move with it. And if we delete the VM, its policy is deleted. And if we identify a vulnerability, the attributes of the VM are dynamically updated and quarantine controls are enforced. I can see his wheels are spinning. He says, that all sounds great, but the volume of east-west traffic is massive. How can this be done in software? What's the gag? I tell him that from a performance standpoint, it's a whole new ballgame. The firewalling is baked into the NSX platform. It operates in the kernel of every hypervisor. You get 20 gigabits per second of throughput per host, my friend, and that's only applied to the VMs running on that hypervisor alone. We have over 100 hypervisors. You do the math. So Jesse's like, okay, I get it. Virtual networks are isolated by default. And what you're talking about here is basic stateful firewalling for multi-tier app environments, right? But what about this? What if we want to apply more advanced next generation firewalling capabilities for some critical application types? I remind him that NSX is a platform, not a competing firewall product. 
Outlook, Palo Alto Networks, and a bunch of other partners have already integrated with NSX to take advantage of its distributed enforcement and automated provisioning. I think that's when things clicked. Jesse's face lit up. Really? Where have you been all my life? Wow, I just, I mean, you just saved us a pile of money in firewalls alone. So how fast can we get this deployed? I tell him, hey, it's software. How about this afternoon? Hey everybody, this is Brad Headland. We're going to do a quick demo here with VMware NSX for vSphere Security. I'm going to show some zero trust micro segmentation as well as virtualization centric grouping. This is a demo that goes along with a blog I wrote. Uh, you can read the full blog if you type in the URL that you see on the screen here. What we're going to do is start with this environment here on the left. We basically have two virtual machines that are on the same trust zone. Right? There's no inspection of any traffic between those two VMs. There's really no security or visibility controls because the firewall is really bolted on top and, and doesn't have any control over that environment. So we're going to take that existing environment. We're going to um, add in NSX. We're going to create a group, a security group. We're going to add the VMs to that group, and we're going to apply a policy to the group. And then the transparent distributed firewall within NSX is going to uh, take action, and we'll see how that looks. We even look at some of the logs. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to pull up my vSphere web client here. I'm already logged into the NSX portion. Let's actually, <clears throat> let's actually go and take a quick look at the VMs that we're going to use. So here is prod web1. And you can see right now I've just got it connected to a port group that I've called VLAN91. Same thing with prod web2. That as well is connected to a port group that's called VLAN91. <clears throat> They're basically on the same IP subnet. And I'll go ahead and pull up the console here of prod web1. And we can see that I have full SSH capabilities to prod web2. And I can go ahead and log in from what? Well, if I can type in the right password. There we go. All right, so there's no uh, security control. There's no, nothing blocking any kind of access from web1 to web2. All right, so what I'm going to do is go into vSphere, back to vSphere, go into NSX, Networking and Security. We're going to go to the Service Composer. I'm going to create a group. So I'm going to create that virtualization-centric group. I'll click here in the Service Composer. We'll give it a name. I'll call it Prod Web. <clears throat> and here's one of the cool things about the grouping in NSX is that membership is dynamic. So what I'm going to say here is that any VM with the name containing prod web is going to be a part of this group. And I'll just finish this out and finished here. So we can see right away the group has been created and the two VMs are already a member of that group just based on the, the, uh, the naming, uh, dynamic naming that I asked for. Okay, and we can see here that there are no security policies applied. There's no firewall policies applied. There's no traffic steering policies applied. So let's go ahead and do that. So now I'm going to go to uh, security policies and I'm going to create a policy. I'll call it uh, prod web and we will get to the firewall section here. I'm going to create a firewall rule and I'll call this web to web for traffic going from the web servers to the web servers. We want to block that traffic. Um, source is the policy group and we want the destination to be the policies group. So anything going from web, from prod web to prod web, we're going to block that. And because this is a stateful firewall, which is capable of logging, I'm also going to log that traffic. Okay? So we can see the policy. We'll finish that. All right, so there's my policy. Now, the only thing I need to do at this point is apply the policy. So I'm just going to right-click here on the policy, click Apply, and I'm going to select Prod Web. There we go, and the policy is applied. Okay, so what happened at that moment is the distributed firewall was programmed with the rules. If I go to the firewall now, we can actually see the firewall rules that were applied. There it is. Anything coming from prod web to prod web 
any any traffic, block it, and should be able to see that the log is there. Yep, there we have logging. Okay, so now let's go back to the prod web VM. Oh, look at that. My uh, console is actually already timed out. The firewall rule already took effect. So what I will do is go to prod web 2 just to demonstrate it, and I will try to SSH to prod web 1. And we're going to see, of course, that is now blocked by the stateful firewall. Okay, so real quickly, I'm going to go take a look at the logs. So I'm going to go to my log analysis tool for me. That's VMware Log Insight. So I'm going to pull that up, log in. I've created a custom dashboard, uh, the NSX distributed firewall. So I've got a few different dashboards to look at here. And I can already see the logs showing up um, of source IP address, destination IP address. We can see the source IP of web 2 going to web 1. Port 22, that's my SSH session, protocol TCP, blocked. Why don't I just go ahead and click on that, go to interactive analytics. And there we can see the actual firewall logs uh, of of the SSH session being blocked between those two web VMs on the same on the same network. Okay, so that's it for the quick demo. You can see we've got uh, virtualization centric grouping. We've got policies. We're going to apply to those. We've got transparent distributed firewall that uh, that enforces those policies. And it didn't really matter, uh, you know, what port group I I put these VMs on. I kept them on the same port group they started with. I didn't have to make any changes at all to the network configuration. I just created some policies with NSX and pushed them out. Okay, so that concludes the demo. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to join me today. As always, I hope you found great value in these sessions and look forward to talking to you again. Please be sure to follow me on Twitter and at Big Virtual Me for more details. And be sure to reach out to your local engineering and account management teams for more information on these fantastic products. As always, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Have a great week.